Hello. Hello. I am Alex. I'm Val. And we are here to talk about Sopranos. Yes. Approaching the end of season 6A. We are on season 6A, episode 10, Mo and Joe. Mo Ma- and Joe. Mo and Joe. Matthew Weiner episode. Hmm. And we're we're getting towards the end slowly. We are. We've, uh, yeah, we're we've, slowing down our pace. We're going to do one a week. I think part of it is that we've just been busy and it's been insane to try and keep up. But it's also just to do justice to the last episodes of the series, especially yeah. as we get into 6B. I just think that they're some of the best episodes yeah. in TV history and we don't want it to be rushed. Yeah. And we're so close. I mean, there's not many episodes in yeah. 6B anyway. And then it'll be over. So. And then it's over. So Yeah. So we're going to stretch it out a little bit. Might as well do it right and uh, sleep for once. Sleep a little bit <laughs> in, in life. In yeah. A while. First time in a while. We haven't really been doing that. And that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's winter suddenly. Hmm. Interesting. What was it before? You In know, I always... Well, it was that festival, right? Like the festival of right. St. Elzier. Okay. I don't know when that happens. It was windy. It... You know, people were wearing sweaters. Mm-hmm. So I would imagine it's, you know, some kind of fall time. But it's suddenly very winter. Mm-hmm. There's actually a lot of strange passage of time, I find. There's obviously, like, the obvious example of Vito contemplating it. But there's also people finding out about things and time kind of passing. Mm-hmm. Well, there's also, like, mention of a five-month trial for Johnny Sack. Mm-hmm. And then we see that whole thing kind of happen throughout this episode. Right. Also. Yeah, so there's a lot happening. Things kind of that are kind of presented to us with this kind of like broad stroke. Mm-hmm. I find mm-hmm. it's not we're not super in the moment right now. Things are kind of general. I find in this episode, which is interesting to be so close to the end of the season and to have that kind of general approach. Mm-hmm. I mean, the narrative is propelled forward with Vito coming back, but otherwise, uh, well, we have Johnny Sack. Going to prison is, is mm-hmm. pretty major, but there's a lot of these kind of small storylines that kind of play out within the episode itself. Yeah. And there's a lot of kind of just relationships that are investigated in this episode. So it leaves us kind of wondering, where are we heading to at the end of season 6A? What will be the climax? Uh, obviously, I guess Vito coming back seems like it's kind of the storyline that's kind of setting things up for for more to happen at mm-hmm. the end of this season. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying anything. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe it's about Salvitro. Well, I think Salvitro is kind of a counterpart to Vito in this episode. Yeah. The episode starts with Salvitro. We see his truck. I forget what exactly it says, but it's like over 40 years in business. Yeah. I feel like Salvitro is this example of somebody who works an honest living, who's been manipulated, taken advantage of by the mob, is kind of put out. Is It's very difficult for him to recover. He's kind of doing work for others in a way that does not benefit himself. And he's just kind of a blue collar worker and I feel like that's kind of one of the central parts of this episode because Vito can't do that Mm -hmm. and that's ultimately what pushes him to come back to New Jersey well maybe we'll talk about that after we can talk about why Vito comes back Mm -hmm. but yeah but I I think think there's a reason why Sal Vitro shows up in this episode I think that he's actually part of the thematic material in this this episode absolutely particularly and he does actually show up quite a bit and I think the fact that the episode starts on him is not a coincidence Mm -hmm. and it ends with him also really like almost ends with him right yeah not quite the last scene Mm -hmm. no pretty much that's interesting so where do you want to start what are your what are your thoughts I don't know I I mean I want to talk about Vito Mm -hmm. and I want to talk about um Janice and Bobby and this whole kind of like concept of being related by blood and right what that means to these characters. Um, You know, why Tony makes certain decisions regarding them during this episode, why Tony makes certain decisions regarding Carmela that are different than the decisions that he makes for Janice. 
Um, I think that, yeah, it relates to Johnny Sack and his family, too. And Johnny Sack I think Sack this and investigation family. of family. Also, Bobby and Bobby Jr., Bobby and Janice, mm-hmm. there's this kind of... Yeah, there's this kind of investigation of what it means to be in a family, what one does for one's family. Yeah. And how it kind of manifests in these different family units in this episode. Yep. Because different people are advantaged and disadvantaged throughout the episode. And as per usual, Tony and his kind of orbit, they always kind of tend to come out okay. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah, Tony, I mean, Carmela Tony. doesn't. Tony, <laughs> Tony does. Tony does. Yeah, Tony always does. And Tony's yeah. kind of always looking out for himself. It's interesting. Well, is it, yeah, I was going to say, it's interesting how he talks about it in this episode, like, kind of being cursed, right? That there's this, like, bad... Well, Melfi kind of says it to him. Mm-hmm. But he kind of talks around it, like, this bad luck, right? And he says, when he's talking to Janice earlier, like, she really feels like he blames her for the shooting. And he keeps reiterating he only has his self to blame. Right. But... I don't know if he really does think that. I think he thinks, like, bad yeah. things happen to him. Right. And that he does, he's not really related to them right. in a lot of ways. I, I don't think he can see the way that in which he causes the things that happen mm-hmm. to him to happen to him. Um, but, yeah, so it is this kind of, like, um, like, who takes ownership over their families and what like how do those actions impact families Mm -hmm. uh we have a small scene with him and meadow even right where like he's not able to be supportive to meadow right um he doesn't really take ownership over her pain or her you know like the way that she interacts and her relationships and things like that also meadow just like wants fresh blueberries well yeah she also doesn't really have ownership of her life like she's not really in control of anything she's still the same person who was complaining about food earlier in the series saying doesn't anybody get any food it's the same thing yeah and tony likes to complain about that too. yeah she hasn't really grown up no so yeah how do you feel about meadow right now not good. <laughs> just wanted fresh blueberries. She's turning into a Noah Tenenbaum. I mean, she dated Noah Tenenbaum. It's true. So, so. there's there's no accounting for taste. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where to kind of start. We well, can start let's with stay the on Tony that because stuff. I think there's yeah. more. I think there's an investigation of these ideas for Tony in his therapy session. Yes. No, that's a good like the Melfi session. This episode are really key. Yeah. I think. I mean, him talking about one thing that's interesting is this idea of, like, Janice gets nothing because he got the scars. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because at the end of the episode, Tony does give her this house, which I think is a raises a lot of questions because it's not a typical move for Tony. Why does Tony go out of his way to do something that's seemingly generous to Janice? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't really get anything from it. Like, he gets things, like, from Janice. He gets things from... Like, it's, like, kind of like a power thing with Johnny Sack and with that deal that was going on Mm -hmm. with the business that Johnny Sack wanted him to sell. Um, You know, uh, but that's really the only person he kind of gets something from in that exchange. So, I don't know. Like, I do think, like, uh, again, like, even though he says, like, that... Uh, he has the scars and so she gets nothing. She says earlier in the episode, like, the only thing connecting us is blood. Right. And so I do, there's kind of this, like, visceral element to it where it is, it's like, they are connected kind of through their scars or their pain or their blood, Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's kind of like a violent image, but they they are, right? And he talks about how Janice, like, used to stand up for him and used to, like, you know, take on their mother, um, they but then both he also have... says that Janice does Janice. That Janice yeah. is only doing things for herself. I think yeah. that he actually but so backed is Tony. Off. Of course. And yeah. I think that's a part of this episode. I think yeah. everybody's doing everything for themselves. But this idea of Tony being aware that Janice does Janice, it's almost like he takes that approach or something in a similar way. He like that admires he, it or something. He admires yeah. it in the same way that he kind of weaponizes Melfi's advice. He kind of investigates that and then starts to do it. Because mm-hmm. I think that most of his actions still are Mm self-serving even getting the house for janice there's something there i mean i think that it's a part of it is just getting janice off his back Mm -hmm. like he knows that janice will do janice and that janice is after him and this is a way for him to kind of 
placate her. Yeah, well, I think it's something else, though, too, because he talks about with Melfi, like, he says, like, Janice creams over misery, right? Right. Like, she gets off on misery, basically. And we see that when he does give her the house that she, like, seems very sad, right? right. Like, she's not used to having happy feelings right. and that's actually not what she really gets off on right and so in some ways it's a little bit underhanded like she's, she's like mm. he kind of puts her off by doing right. that um interesting because she feeds off of like she really wants tony to say to her like i blame you for the shooting for example like she's like looking for that creating the drama um yeah so i think there's something there for that too like it's kind of like never giving anybody what they want right it's like giving them the opposite well interestingly too like in the beginning of the episode we have janice visiting tony and requesting this promotion for bobby Mm -hmm. saying that he should be a captain and the episode we don't see that happen no and that doesn't happen the episode concludes and he gives them a house which again isn't really what she was asking for Mm -hmm. and it's also kind of makes me ask the question of well is Tony happier just giving this material thing through this business transaction that he kind of structures compared to honoring Bobby, Mm. who he has associated in his mind with this kind of caring work that he doesn't respect that's brought up him laughing about doing Junior's diapers and Bobby saying, well, that's, you know, like, why are you viewing it through this lens? But he doesn't want to appreciate Bobby and do anything for him, even after he's shot. In fact, all that Tony does is just say that it was his fault. He should have yeah. known it. He's giving me money because he knows that he screwed up. There's absolutely yeah. no compassion for Bobby. Yeah. It's just kind of this simple route of responding to what they're both looking for mm-hmm. through Janice, mm-hmm. Janice's request. I think there is something like, yeah, like the different treatment based on who's related to you by blood. Like, and he, he does kind of talk about it, like with his... What's Janice and Bobby's daughter's name? No, it's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Janice and Bobby's daughter. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Like how it's she look, how she looks like Janice. Yeah, that's our right. excuse for everything. It's, yeah, hot. it's hot. It's summer. Yeah. Um, you know, like she looks like Janice. Like there is this emphasis on people who are related to you by blood and like what that kind of means. Bobby's an in-law of Tony's. He doesn't owe Tony anything. And we've had that we've had that come up a lot before with Christopher, for example, too. And there's this concept too in this episode of you get what you pay for. Mm. And I think like that's kind of what ties together um Salvitro and Bobby mm. and Janice and Vito and right. like all these all these characters is that's like, you know, that's a saying that people say, right? Like you get what you pay for. But Salvitro is doing this work for free, right? right? Because he's being threatened mm-hmm. by it. And and because that's advantageous to Tony to have him doing that. And now it's no longer advantageous. Um, right. Janice paid for, like Janice, I don't know, I think, maybe I'm like optimistic, but I think like, like when Tony's talking about like his scars and stuff like that, I think like Janice did pay for the shit that she mm, like with in her own way. With, in her own way, I mean she's a piece of shit, but like that Tony does acknowledge that they both went through this shit and like that they, I, I don't know, I think like that they are, you know, for good or for bad, like entitled to something better, mm. um, entitled to to good things, right. And, you know, not that that's like an admirable behavior or anything like that. But I think he does see things in Janice based on that. Um, You know, if you hire Vito, you get what you pay for. He's going to have a weird internal monologue and think about his lunch while he's working for you. Right. Um, You get what you pay for. Right. (laughs) I don't know. Well, wait, but Vito... Who knows how much he's getting paid, I guess, as a contractor. I Wait, don't know. Salvitro Vito. No. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. It's okay. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Um, we have to have the AC off when we record this. Yeah, these. this is the thing. It's to be make huge, hard in the huge sacrifices <laughs> yeah. for the sake of this podcast. Yeah. So the other main one for me that's really interesting is this decision that evolves throughout the course of the episode of Tony shutting down, leaning on the inspector. Mm-hmm. for Carmela because that's clearly self-serving there's this conversation that he has with Meadow 
Um, but th there's also this idea of, you know, who's good to talk to, your mother, like this idea of him always delegating work to Carmela. Mm -hmm. And when she's not present for it, he doesn't like the arrangement that exists. And no. so he changes things. He wants things. groceries to be bought and Meadow to be, you know, yeah, but talked to. And... Exactly. But there's this also this concept for me of not doing work that he likes that's yeah. the status quo that kind of relates to the other themes of the episode mm -hmm. Vito going somewhere and not being able to work and struggling with this new life where he actually needs to work for a living and Tony in, an, in a situation where Carmela is trying to work for a living albeit in a way that is completely fabricated by the mm -hmm. life that they have and, and the uh, the the privileges and the relationships and the uh, threats that they can, that, that they possess to other people. Mm -hmm. um, but Carmel is ostensibly kind of going off to work. Tony doesn't like it though, because the work that she was doing for him is now kind of gone. But everybody in that kind of circle is just kind of incapable of doing any honest work. And I think that's the same problem that Vito has in the episodes that he's just incapable at this point of, of working. Yeah. Because the Sopranos and everybody around them, everybody who's a part of this culture in New Jersey is just incapable of doing any real work. Yeah. I mean, we see Vito, right? Like in the beginning of the episode, he's at the library and he's drinking mm -hmm. and he's calling about gambling. He's calling about slot machines. Right. And whatever. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we see him, again, have this very weird internal monologue, which I, you know, I'm not often critical of The Sopranos, but I think we could have gotten the same, um, I think we could have gotten the picture. If, I always remember the that scene. I always like that scene. <laughs> I don't know about it myself. Um, I don't know if it, what it gives us. It does kind of stand out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we would have seen it um, and earlier days of the show yeah maybe not I think it's I don't know if it's Matt Wiener and his kind of style that comes out but it's just something that is different stylistically yeah. from the way the show is written up until this point I mean but, it's um, funny it's comical but yeah 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 it's just a different <laughs> style I find because yeah. it does still draw into these themes like it still does relate there's yeah. more going on than just like a comical kind of farce scene yeah but i'm just like all i'm saying is we could have gotten it without the internal monologue i actually kind of like it because like this idea to like this focus on time in an episode where time is being more elusive mm -hmm. where we're focusing on what it means to work mm -hmm. there's something relatable about it that all of us can kind of understand who've worked a job i <laughs> as a jazz musician i guess <laughs> my experience is minimal but that's okay i've <laughs> done a few things it's been a long time but um I mean, I, there is like a mass market kind of appeal to it. But then I think it's also for me underneath the surface, this idea of Vito is trying to pass time in his new life. Yeah. That there's an aspect of trying to just make it through the day. And he's excited about that. Yeah. And like this idea of just kind of like getting through your life is different because he's just always been in a situation where he's taking advantage of people and there's this excitement that doesn't exist in the kind of mundane yeah. everyday life and I think that the characters in Sopranos are always dealing with the regularness of life and that's always one of the chief things that's kind of hanging over everybody's heads but nobody really has to deal with it the way most people have to deal with mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see Vito in an environment where he's dealing with it in a way that is much more mundane than the life that he leads mm -hmm. and he's just incapable of doing it at this point mm -hmm. even in the life that everybody has within the mafia you know like going all the way back to season one there's like this presentation of the idea of Christopher kind of freaking out in Legend of Tennessee, Moltisanti about just like life is too regular. And then that idea and that theme is kind of just repeated over and over again totally. in the show. But those characters have such a kind of wild, exciting, unpredictable, dangerous life compared to most people. So for an audience, when we kind of examine this show, everything still kind of applies to us because these kind of philosophical questions still exist. But they're just so far removed from that level of drudgery that when they're actually encountered with it, it's just like unthinkable. Yeah. And Vito goes back because he just can't do it. Yeah. Well, I think also like the character of Johnny Cakes slash Jimbo. Johnny Cakes. Um, <laughs> um, just call him Johnny Cakes. He's interesting, right? Because he does work a very 
monotonous job, right? He like makes pancakes. Makes Johnny cakes. <laughs> and and he does a lot of his work without pay, right? He's a volunteer mm-hmm. firefighter. And so this thing that like Vito kind of thinks he might be drawn to, right? Like he kind of thinks that that sounds exciting mm-hmm. to do what they do, right? Right. And he goes and he cuts those wires like he's like I used to be an I started in ele- an electric work or yeah. whatever. And he goes and he cuts those wires and then they're talking about it later at the bar and he's like, well, I, I have these hips. Like I, I mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have surgery. Like right. he he's really not capable of doing work without this greater kind of excitement and payoff. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with them when he's, you know, doing odd jobs around that farm. Yeah. Having an internal monologue. Right. That that's not something that he's able to do. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think that the title of this episode, Mo and Joe, which is referenced from Bobby on these two workers that are, it seems like they're just kind of like laying wood. Mm -hmm. There's like wood that's being repeatedly dropped. Mm Mm-hmm. For me, I mean, Mo and Joe, these very kind of like basic, I don't know, kind of like proletariat names or something. Proletariat. (laughs) It's hot. (laughs) Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, the proletariat are laying wood. (laughs) Mo and Joe. (laughs) But okay, so workers. It's just like, and it's also just this like, this simplicity to it or something. Yeah. And even the shot that we have is just this kind of, like, cycle of of laying wood. Yeah. And I think that it's relevant and it's interesting that that's what they choose for the title because I think that is kind of the thing that ties throughout the entire Mm -hmm. episode is this idea of physical work, of working an actual job, of producing something, of making an honest living. Mm -hmm. And it's something that everybody is just so far from that they they can't do Mm -hmm. it anymore. There's a lot of references to it, even, like, Ginny, John talks about her IRA, that it comes from her working at the tie counter at Wanamaker's and how they met there. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to think about John Sack, too, as John, John Sack. Sack. John <laughs> Sack, yes, meeting Jin Sack. Yeah. Um, being drawn to her as somebody who was working that job. Yeah. Like, that's somebody who he wanted to be with. And Johnny Sack is, or John Sack, as we call him, <laughs> now, is somebody who does possess, like, a great deal of, like, honest love and emotion mm-hmm. for Ginny, much mm-hmm. more so than almost any other character mm-hmm. in the show. And it's interesting that Ginny was working that job and is working a job that is also kind of like this honest work, basic... Tie, tie sales. Proletariat <laughs> position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just... I'm, I'm thinking about that because I think it is... It is interesting. And then, like, you know, seeing that for Carmela also, right? Like, right. her trying to have this honest work, quote unquote, honest work, but really not being able to in, in do no that, way, right? Is like, it? yeah. So, uh, yeah, like, it's like the scene where, you know, she's like, did, did he bring, did he bring a gift? And then how hard did he lean? Right. Right. Like, there's never, like, she's not capable, even though, you know, she keeps talking about how hard she's working. That's why I say, yeah, like, she's worked hard i guess i guess uh for her yeah um but it's not the same as people who are you know yeah proletariat right (laughs) right and also for her yeah the the question and her focus is strictly going into leaning on this person Mm -hmm. it's not about making the house with quality construction Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. fixing your mistakes and i think that that's really important because that's something that comes up time and time again in the show is not learning from your mistakes, not fixing them. Yeah. Just glossing them over and kind of like trucking forward. Yeah. No well, matter who it hurts. Yeah. It also really shows like how aware she is. Again, like we see this on multiple occasions, how aware she is of her complici- complicity yeah. in, you know, like she's looking for Tony to lean on this guy yeah. and bring him a bribe. Totally. You know. Yeah. Um, and then Tony doesn't do it. And I think there's, I don't know, like, there's there's multiple layers to that. Like, I think, like, yeah, like, it, it impacts Tony's life for sure to have Carmela doing this. And it always, like, we've always seen him kind of be, like, hesitant about that, right? And he talks to Melfi about um, that they had this arrangement, right? Like, it was this arrangement where um, ostensibly 
Carmela gets this house and Tony's allowed to do whatever he wants. Carmela will look the other way on his recreational activities. Yeah. Which is interesting to hear the to hear Tony talking about it outright because we witness that and it's all this kind of coded language from Tony as that's actually happening. And he basically like once they settle, Tony says, I'll make sure that you never find out about this again. Yeah. And that's the point where they kind of reach an agreement. Yeah. But it's but it's not said in, in that it's, way. It's yeah. spoken in a way where, like, upon many viewings of the show, maybe my understanding would have been like, "Oh, like he will change." Yeah. I, like you, it's it's weird, but like I think you, we called him out on it when we watched it this time. Like I think like totally yeah. no no, but like that coded language is very tricky, and I guess mm-hmm. that's kind of how the mob operates: is that you can't totally understand it on its face value without kind of understanding the innuendo. Yeah, and. It's interesting for me to think about how Tony in this situation has this level of awareness about what he was actually saying. Right. So he was putting out these words to Carmela and he knew exactly what he was saying and likely she knew exactly Mm -hmm. what he was saying. And that that agreement Mm -hmm. for them, that language led to them actually kind of Mm -hmm. agreeing on those terms, which we hear him now say in a much more outright way, which is interesting Mm -hmm. because you would hope that they weren't getting together with like under the understanding that Tony could just be with whoever he wanted recreationally. But that is the arrangement. Yeah. And now Tony is kind of reneging on it. He's yeah. not supporting her with the spec house. Right. Right. It's al- it's almost like he's just kind of blaming her. It's kind of like how he's blaming Bobby saying it was his own fault. Like Yeah. He brought this on himself. It's now okay, so now he blames Carmela. But he's not going out of his way to manipulate the situation mm-hmm. for her own mm-hmm. Well, because, like, I think it's also kind of, like, he's not actually getting out of it his end of the deal, right? Like, Melfi says that. She's like, I thought there hadn't been that much recreational activity going on. Right. Right? Right. And so it's kind of like, like, well, he's not getting his end. Why should should she get hers kind of thing, too? Which is an incredibly narcissistic approach to... Nah. That agreement. No, you don't think so? <laughs> no, not at all. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> I like the comment actually when Vito kills the guy over his mail. Mm. Um, the guy says to him, Someone, or sorry, Vito says, Someone sold the airbags. Mm. When the guy tells to him, Why didn't your airbags go off? And then the guy says, Who would do that? Mm-hmm. Which for me is a kind of pivotal question because for him, he's so far removed from the orbit that we experience in this show that it's unthinkable that somebody could do that. Meanwhile, everybody around Vito and Tony Soprano is engaged in that kind of behavior, and that's how life works. Mm-hmm. So someone who would do that, well, that's basically that's exactly the, that's their this bread type and of person. Yeah. yeah. And Vito is returning to that life. He's returning to that world, yeah. to a place where he's comfortable, to a place where other people behave in those ways. Uh, ultimately, though, the people who are outside of that and the people who don't understand it and are just trying to live their life and are trying to be honest, like this guy who ends up getting shot, whenever somebody has that kind of behavior and comes in contact with these members of the mafia, they're always damaged or killed or injured, and there's really no coming back. Like, you can't win. It's just this toxic force. So this is somebody who... It's almost like this honest, hard work. This is somebody who wants to get the insurance provider involved, file a police report, and the only response to that is to take him out of commission, to Mm -hmm. kill him. So there's kind of this inability for those two worlds to meet. It just, the honest work just gets completely devoured by the world of the mafia. Yeah. It's just, they're completely incompatible. Yeah. And even like, I think like Vito, like, and we're kind of, I mean, I'm jumping around, but like, in with Vito in his relationship to Johnny Cakes like he also tries to like come clean and be real right like he tells him kind of this almost the truth about who he is and where he comes from he got a divorce though (laughs) he was divorced for a few years um you know doesn't really tell him anything um and you kind of like again like you kind of have this hope that maybe that is a possibility for these characters right Right. but then of course by the end of the episode we see he just takes off and shoots a guy and for some reason goes back like i I, the thing about this is like i don't really get why Vito goes back it seems like he must be aware that 
good things can't happen from that. No, like... He understands the culture. Yeah. He knows who he's dealing with with Phil Leotardo, and he knows Polly and the decision that Tony has to make. It's yeah. It's surprising, because I don't know what he expects. Yeah, I don't know either. Why he wouldn't just go somewhere else. or I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Well, I guess he just, he can't stay away from it. Yeah. That's at least what's presented. It's one of those moments, like, it's maybe a little questionable as a... As a plot point, mm. because and people do criticize Six A. I mean, I think it is one of the more heavily criticized seasons. Mm-hmm. It actually starts off so strong mm-hmm. when we're when we've been watching it um, for quite some time. I was actually kind of blown away by uh, how much I I was enjoying and how much mm-hmm. I thought was going on. As it progresses, I think it actually isn't one of the. I think it is one of the weaker seasons, which mm. is still stronger than almost With, everything, uh, everything else. Yeah, but that is a plot point that I think is. Um, it's a little questionable. Like it's, it's. I think it's fair to question the merits of Vito going back because he's aware that he must be, yeah, in a position where he's likely going to have his life threatened. Yeah. If almost like definitely, like, like definitely, yeah. So like, why is he doing? I mean, we'll see how it all plays out, and we'll see like how he interacts with others as he gets back. Mm-hmm. But you do have to wonder: is that really how somebody would? respond to that situation and if he couldn't live in that environment with johnny cakes is that what he would do yeah i don't know i i I don't know um i I mean i like how it kind of like plays with you and you don't know where he's going in his car right you know you wonder if he's going back or if he isn't and then you see him drive yeah by satrials yeah and you kind of realize this that like that's the decision that he made so i do like like i like Mm -hmm. the progression of it but i do just like i feel like he's a smarter guy than that um well we'll see but it's (laughs) but like but it's also like kind of goes back to like the you know it's blood and it's um i don't know you can't like tear yourself away from these things yeah that easily um no totally yeah, uh, Johnny Cakes is reading Devil in the White City. Right. Yeah, that's a book that we have and I still haven't read. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's lots of, you know, good um, kind of like, you know, scene changes with some innuendo like trains going in tunnels. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. Know. <laughs> there is. <laughs> I That's feel good. I feel like Vito, the way that he's dressed when we see him by that, I think it's a cement mixer mm-hmm. where he's wearing this hat and this like done up coat is actually, I actually thought it was Sal at first. Mm-hmm. There's kind of a parallel between those two characters. The hat that Sal wears, there's something that kind of ties those two together. Yeah, the way they walk even. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and kind of putting Vito in that situation of being kind of a laborer mm-hmm. and being in a different position than he's typically in. Right. Um, yeah, and just this this idea of, of family. Like, John, um, we have Tony changing the terms of the agreement when John's brother comes and says, Johnny Sack really needs this for his family. Yeah. And then Tony kind of contemplates it, and then he manipulates it for his family. Mm-hmm. So this understanding of family is always kind of self... Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's done in a way where it kind of just benefits one one's own family yeah as opposed to thinking about the principles of family or caring about other people's family yeah it's just this kind of like extended narcissism yeah uh the scene where bobby jr like because bobby jr and bobby are having challenges in this Mm -hmm. episode too right um bobby jr is going off with his friends and (laughs) watching different football games and believe it um, chargers and uh, Tony's kind of observing this scene where he's going to go watch the Chargers mm-hmm. and then Janice kind of I mean, berates him for his report card and, yeah. and you know, like kind of has this power over him that Bobby doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of also goes back to, um, like, why does Tony give Janice the house, right? Like, it is kind of this, like, seeing Janice as this powerful mm-hmm. person, right? Like, that he's that's someone who he's kind of like proud in some ways to have as a family member he's not proud of like he wouldn't he you know he doesn't want to make bobby a captain Mm -hmm. 
that's not the kind of stuff he values. He does value Janice's kind of like cutting and manipulative right. behavior right. Um, in that. Um, and so, you know, and he talks about and that. So again that's what his... he rewards. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a really interesting episode. It's one of those ones where it could seem like it's not one of the standout episodes of the season. And it probably isn't one of the standout episodes mm. of the season, but it is, there is a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot under the surface that I probably missed on multiple mm -hmm. viewings, but mm -hmm. I... Yeah, it's great, and it's interesting how it's kind of propelling us to the end of 6A. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot does happen. I mean, Vito coming back and Johnny Sack, that's pretty significant. Yeah. So. Yeah. So thank you for listening. Yeah. We'll be back next Thursday. Next week, you know, yeah. And we'll just be sailing along with uh, yeah. season six. Email us if you uh, yeah, email us. have we ideas. Yeah, email us. hearing from you. Um, especially as we go towards the end of the season, anything yeah. that you want us to focus on or touch on. Yep. Um, or pay attention to. Yep. Sounds good. It does. Well, okay. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye. Bye.